Come in, everyone. Come in. It is Monday. It's Monday. Thank you for waiting patiently. Uh, I know many of you have been waiting to get on uh, to hear uh, the word of the Lord for today. Uh, thank you for your patience. We're getting ready to get started because uh, I have just a short amount of time to do this. Uh, I don't want to prolong the time. I want to jump into uh, the word that the Lord's given me. I'm going to give just about a minute or so uh, to allow everyone uh, to come in that wants to uh, be on live. I know I'm uh, coming on at a different time. Typically I'm on, I would have been on maybe an hour and a half ago, but I'm coming on later. Uh, but this word is important. It's crucial. Uh, it is a word I believe from the Lord, and I'm going to be jumping around uh, just a little bit uh, because there are several different uh, topics that I want to speak to, and I'm going to try to condense it all in. And then I'm also going to be very careful how I share this word. Uh, I do understand that when we're on uh, public platforms like this, there are certain things that we can share. There are certain things that we will uh, potentially get flagged for sharing. And I'm just going to be honest with you, uh, but I'm going to share what the Lord has told me to share and given me to share. And uh, I'll share as much as I can here, but I'm going to give you a minute to log in. Let me know where you're watching from, what city, what state, what country are you joining in from? I see so many of you on from all over the United States. And then there are uh, many of you that are on from different countries. I saw uh, Philippines that's on, Trinidad is on here. Uh, you're here from different parts of Africa. Uh, you're on from Barbados, I see you. Uh, Houston, Washington, DC, New York, you guys are on from everywhere. Uh, if you uh, don't mind, share this on Facebook. If you're watching from Facebook, hit the share button and let others know we're live. There's a word from the Lord. This is, I believe, a crucial, important word that we're going to need, not just for 2024. This is a word for beyond 2024, because we're going to see some things unfold this year, but it's going to lead to uh, certain key events that are going to take place in 2025. And I'll get into that in just a minute. Uh, but uh, if you are just jumping on, hit share. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, hit subscribe, hit like so that you'll get the notification anytime uh, the Lord gives me a word and has me come on live. I want you to get the alert and you can do that by going to YouTube and hitting the subscribe button there, and it'll make sure that you are uh, locked in and you'll get that word. Uh, so let's open in prayer and let's jump right in uh, to this word. Father, we thank you for another day, for another opportunity to come before you and to worship you, to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. We lift you up, Jesus. We magnify your name. We let you know how amazing you are to us. Holy Spirit, you're my best friend. I invite you in to this live even the more, because if you're not in it, Father, we don't want to be a part of it. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to speak through me. I'm asking you, Father, to release your word with clarity, now with understanding. Let the understanding of your people be open. And Father, give us the wisdom to navigate the future and the encouragement and the faith to know that the kingdom of God is rising. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, I'm excited again to be on here with you. If you're just jumping on, uh, do me a favor and hit share. Uh, if you're watching from Facebook, if you're on from YouTube, go ahead and hit uh, the subscribe button there. Uh, but I want to jump right into this. Amos chapter 3. I want to give you the scripture first, and then I'm going to go into the prophetic forecast and unpack some of the things that the Lord's been giving me. Uh, and again, I'm only going to share what uh, I can on this public forum, but there are certain things that uh, must be shared because uh, there are times that the Holy Spirit gives us prophecy, and there are different types of prophecy. In scripture, there is some prophecy that uh, is to just encourage it builds you up. It gives you edification. Uh, then there is a prophecy that can give you uh, instruction. There's prophecy that can give you direction. Uh, there are prophetic words that the Lord can release to you uh, that reveal key insight for your purpose, your calling, your future, different types of prophecy. But then there are prophetic warnings uh, that are given in Old and New Testament. You see them in both. And when the Lord gives uh, any kind of a prophetic warning, we must understand why he gives it. He gives it to us uh, 
number one, uh, because if we are connected to the Holy Spirit, if we've invited him in, he should be our friend. We should be friends uh, with Holy Spirit. And so he shares his secret things uh, with those that are his. And so that's what the Bible says uh, in Amos chapter three and verse seven. Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plans to his servants, the prophets. That's one translation of it. Uh, you probably know it more from the King James. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. And so when you look at that word secret there in Hebrew, that word secret does not just mean telling you something that you did not know. The word secret doesn't just mean telling you something confidential. That, that is a part of that meaning. But that word secret is so loaded in, in the Old Testament there in Hebrew. It means the counsel of God. And when we say the word, when I say the word counsel, I'm talking about the counsel of heaven. Do you know that in scripture that God deliberates with a heavenly counsel? He comes together and makes decisions with a heavenly court and council, and he deliberates concerning the heavenlies and concerning the earth. Uh, I can prove it to you. You see it in Genesis. Uh, uh, when you look at Genesis in the very beginning, he said, come, let us make man in our image. Who's the us that he was speaking to? He was speaking to the heavenly council. Now, this is something that's been lost over uh, many, many centuries. The early Hebrews believed in uh, this heavenly court that would deliberate. It's in their Hebrew writings. Uh, it's in uh, the concept of this is in the Mishnah, uh, which is the oral uh, part of the Torah that's now been written down. Uh, it's it's found within Hebrew concepts, and we've lost it in modern Christianity. We don't really talk about the counsel of God anymore, but there is a heavenly counsel where he comes together with his angels. I'll prove it to you again. In Job chapter one, the Bible says there was a day when the sons of God gathered together. They came before the throne of God and they were reporting to him. And then we find in Job chapter one that here comes Satan in the midst of them. Why would he come? Why is it that Lucifer would come in the midst of the heavenly council? I was always taught that uh, Lucifer cannot access the presence of God. Well, Job 1 gives us a different uh, picture of this. And the reason why he could come to the council is because he still, even though he is a fallen angel, he can do nothing without the permission of God. And so he comes and reports to him and God says to him, what have you been doing? He says, I've been going to and fro throughout the earth, seeking whom I can devour. And so here is God speaking back uh, in this heavenly council. Have you considered my servant Job? Why? Because Lucifer, although he operates and tries to go against the will of God, the Lord uses that evil and turns it into good. He does not allow the enemy to do anything without his permission. And if he allows him to do it, then that means that God has a bigger plan in the midst of it. And so there is a heavenly council that deliberates and that sets in motion uh, what will take place in the earth, what happens in the world and uh, within. And there are requests that come up before the council of God. There was a point in the New Testament where Jesus encountered uh, these devils and they said, I adjure you by the court of heaven. Uh, can you allow us, do not torment us before our time. Can you allow us to go into the pigs or into the swine? And so it's interesting that some translations of that in New Testament, uh, those demons said, I drew you by the court of heaven. They were asking for permission. Uh, can you let us go into the swine? And he allowed them to go. And so you see the concept of a heavenly council throughout scripture, Old and New Testament. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because Amos 3 and 7 says, the Lord will do nothing. Unless he reveal his, we translate it as secret, but it's the word heavenly counsel. This means that there are prophets and prophetic people that God will invite into his deliberations. This is why worship and the secret place is so important. I'm going to move past this in a moment, but I need you to get this. I'm getting ready to go into the prophetic forecast and share with you what the Lord has given me for the year and beyond. Uh, but before this, I need you to understand that there are deliberations that happen in the heavenlies and there are people that the Lord will give access if you are willing to worship him. 
If you're willing uh, to allow Jesus to become your everything, he brings you in, he draws you in, and he begins to share secret things uh, with you, and especially for those that are called to the office of a prophet. He desires friendship with us. This means that we can't be so uh, gift-driven that we miss the personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Do you know that there are many people that are operating as prophets, and they're operating in a gift, but they do not know the Lord. They have known their gift gifting. They've come to understand how their gift works. They know how to work a word of knowledge. They know how to work uh, a, a prophecy similar to a psychic. A psychic can sit there and just rattle off things and they might be fact, but they are not truth. There is a difference between fact and truth. Fact means I can show you the statistics for this. I can show you uh, on some kind of paper that this, this happened, but truth is a spirit. Truth is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you encounter the spirit of truth, he cannot be matched by anything. Uh, the spirit of truth trumps everything and everyone. And so I believe that the Lord desires for his prophets and prophetic people to operate in a spirit of truth. And the only way we can do that is through relationship with the Lord. We're in a time now where the Lord is calling his fivefold ministers to repentance. Hear me by the spirit. We're in a time now where God's not just uh, chastising uh, those that are in the pews. He's dealing with people that preach. He's dealing with those of us uh, that stand behind pulpits. He's calling us to repentance and back to the altar. He's requiring that we now come to a place where we put away those things that are not of him. And so the purification that we're getting ready to see in 2024 is going to be a purification of pulpits and platforms. Hear me by the spirit. We are about to see a purification of pulpits and platforms. You're getting ready ready to see ministers of the gospel and pastors and prophets and apostles and leaders, we will begin to fall on our faces and repent and humble ourselves before the Lord. It's coming. You're going to see a revival of those that stand in pulpits that have said, I've been preaching, but I drifted away from God. I've been ministering, but but I was I really lost my faith. There are many that have been in that place and the Lord is calling you back. He's not judging you in order to punish you. He's releasing judgment to bring correction to bring us back to him. Hear me by the spirit when I say this. Now, this helps me to go into the first thing that I want to address. There are several things I'm going to jump around on this live because the Lord has given me a lot to speak to. First thing that I want to deal with uh, is uh, what's been happening concerning the unusual shakings of weather that's going on. We're going to see this happen throughout 2024. It's been going on, but it's about to get worse. We're going to see it where the weather patterns are so uh, out of, of, of sync with their norm. It's going to be very different. And it's not just so that we can say, oh, we know it's a sign of the times. That's not just it. Uh, there is prophetic speaking and words that God is releasing through the disruptions and the shakings. So hear me by the spirit. I'm going to play this small clip. And this is a word that I released in December. Some of you heard this before, uh, but there's more that I want to bring out because now we have seen this word being fulfilled. And uh, this is no glory to man or anything like that. There is a message in this and I want you to understand what's happening. So I'm going to play a portion of this small clip. I want you to watch this. And again, if you're just jumping on here, we're getting ready to deal with what's coming in 2024, what the Lord showed me concerning uh, several of uh, the shakings that are about to come, and I'm going to unpack them here. I'll share as much as I can, specifically about sickness, about illness, about uh, in things that are being engineered in labs. And again, I'm going to be careful because I know uh, I don't want to be censored on this live right here. I'm just going to uh, be honest because there's there are things that I need to get out to you. Uh, so I want you to watch this clip and hear the word of the Lord concerning the shaking. Holy, holy. We worship you, King of Kings. We worship you, King of Kings. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 
Hallelujah. I've sent you to this place, says the Lord, that I might shift the landscape in America. For the Lord says, I'm coming down within this nation, says God, and I will shake it from the top to the bottom. In the days to come, you will not recognize this place. The days to come, you will not recognize your country, says the Lord. But you will know that I'm turning every stone that can be turned. And the Spirit of the Lord says that the days of judgment have come. The day that I will begin to send judgment throughout the land. And America shall be turned upside down, says the Lord. But God says that I have seen the corruption in the high places. I have seen the evil that has gone throughout the land, how they work behind the scenes and undercover, even in this nation and in this very city, says the Lord. But God says, I will bring the high places down. And I will make them low, says God. For the Lord says that there shall be a wind, an unusual wind that will begin to howl. For the Lord says that it shall come upon the east coast and up and down the eastern seaboard says the lord but god says that you will hear the reports in the news that there is an unusual wind that shall begin to blow over the next 31 days says god but you will even hear about it that strong winds have come and the lord says this will be your sign and you will know that i have sent my ruach to blow throughout this nation God says that not only am I blowing throughout this nation, but the Lord says I will blow even within the church. For God says I've seen even in the hidden places within the church, but I'm sending my consuming fire, says the Spirit of the Lord. And I will begin to burn away impurities, and I will begin to burn away even those things that are hidden within the pulpits of the churches within America. For the Lord says that the days of cleansing are upon you. The days of renewal are upon you but after that cleansing shall come revival says God after that cleansing shall come an awakening even within my body says the Lord but I will cause my spirit to be poured out on those that have been rejected on those that have been pushed aside from my house says God but I'm drawing them back and I'm drawing them in but this shall be the year of the backslider for the Lord says as they shall come back to me even those that have been within my house but they have been lost I hear the spirit of the Lord say that they are coming back and you will see even within this year that I will cause many to fall upon their faces and they will bow and the Lord says they will reverence me because they will see that I am the Lord your God and I hear the spirit of the Lord saying that an unusual glory is going to begin to manifest in the lives of those that are in this room I hear him saying that even when you get back home there will be unusual encounters of my glory there will be unusual encounters and they will erupt in signs and in wonders in healings and unusual happenings but it shall not make sense what I will do says the Lord I will confound you but this shall be the season that I will confound the wise and you will see the manifestation of my presence and you will know that this 
this gathering has disrupted the nation says the spirit of the Lord somebody give God a shout of praise in this room So I know many of you've heard uh, that prophetic word. Some of you were there in the room. There were a couple thousand people in the room. And then some of you were watching online. Thousands were viewing it online and you've heard it. But I wanted to bring it back. The Lord uh, prompted me to bring that back and to share it again because we're seeing this happen right now. That word was given uh, in early December. And uh, the Lord said we would see it begin over the next 31 days that there would be an unusual wind a strong wind that will begin to howl and it will start up and down the eastern seaboard up and down on the east coast it would howl uh to the point that what i saw as i was releasing that word was storm force wind such strong winds that uh the lord even said it there in that in that prophecy he said uh you will hear reports of it in the news it's going to be so strong it is something that's so unusual the news media is going to begin to report on it and that's been happening over the past several weeks uh we've seen this happen but the key in this prophetic word he said when you hear of this you will know that this wind is my ruach that is blowing throughout this nation. He said it will be a sign of judgment. Now, uh, this is what's been uh, such a sobering and concerning thing to me, is that when I heard this prophetic word, when the Lord spoke this to me in that moment, he said that this would be a sign of judgment in the earth. I need you to understand this. I don't say this to make you panic. I'm not saying this uh, to uh, as clickbait or any of those things. Hear me by the spirit. I've been sharing this uh, in groups, small groups of 100 and in large groups of thousands. So hear me by the spirit as I share this with you, that this year we're coming into another era where America will sit up under judgment. You're going to see the judgment of God and it's starting in the house of God. It's already here. It's really already here. Now, when you hear the term judgment, I want you to realize that judgment deals with God balancing scales, correcting and righting wrongs. And so his ultimate goal, if he ever uh, judges you and me, and he does, his goal is to bring us into right standing with him. It is to get you to the place of repentance. And I know that repent is not a popular word. People want to hear messages on how to feel good. I get it. People want messages on how to be happy. People want messages on how uh, they can enjoy their life and how they can do the things that they've always wanted to do. But people don't want to hear the core message of the gospel. The core message of the gospel, yes, is salvation. Yes, it's the good news that God sent his son, Jesus, on this earth to show us how to live, to die for our sins and to be resurrected on the third day. That's the good news. But there is a condition to receiving that salvation. And the word and the key is repent. And yes, repentance is not just for the world. Repentance is for the church. God is calling his people, all of us, to a place of repentance where we change our mind from wrongdoing. He wants us to begin to turn from evil and to turn from sin and to lay aside every weight and everything that could take us off course. And so that's a word for this hour. And I don't want you to get it twisted because the blessing of the Lord, yes, is coming on many. And yes, we're going to see the favor of God. And yes, the kingdom of God is going to rise. And yes, we're going to see so many great things, but we cannot uh, negate the message of repentance. We cannot avoid the message of repentance because it is necessary. It is for now. And the the Lord is requiring of it. He's requiring companies of prophets to repent for their political indoctrination. Let me just go here for a second. I know this is not going to be popular. I know there are people that are going to be upset about this, but can I just go here? The Lord is requiring prophets to repent for selling themselves over to the highest bidder. He's requiring prophets now to repent for being on the payroll and prophesying according to who's paying you. He, he's now requiring prophets to repent because many have prophesied their opinions and their political allegiances and, and their alliances and what they've come into agreement with with uh, or instead of the word of God. And the Lord is requiring us to give the word whether we like, whether our flesh likes it or not. When we come into agreement with God, we don't have an opinion in the matter. 
When we come into agreement with Holy Spirit, we do not get a say so in what he says. We are just vessels. He said, how can the clay tell the potter how you're going to make me? How can the clay speak to the potter and tell the potter what to do? We are just vessels of clay. Let me calm down. I got to give you the rest of this word. But I feel God in this because there has been so much mess uh, in the prophetic. There has been so much mess uh, that we have seen in the church and many have been silent about it. They've seen it and said, well, you know, well, there's nothing I can do about that. But the Lord is now releasing his fire, his refiner's fire that's going to begin to come in and to begin to cleanse within movements and to begin to cleanse within companies of believers and, and, and within groups. He's sending his fire now to begin to cleanse because many of the things that people are saying is God is not God. The day of us simply giving a prophetic word because we've listened to 10 other prophets and compiled some kind of prophecy together to try to release it as if it is our own. The devil is a liar. It is sin. It is deception. It is not God. And so God's about to break this spirit that is really a spirit of the age that's begin to creep over uh, into ministries and ministers where uh, people are after clicks and algorithms. And the Lord is saying, I don't care how many people you have watching on your live. Are you giving the word that I told you to give? I don't care care how many people are in your church, whether you got five, if you're in obedience to the Lord, then that is success. Success cannot be measured in algorithms and in numbers. It can't be measured in clicks and in how many followers people have, because we're seeing a mimicking spirit begin to creep in. And there are many people that think that because the platform is large, that God is in it. And that's not necessarily the truth. And that's why I've told my team time and time again, I don't care whether we have five people on here. There are times that we will get on and share the word of the Lord and people are going to hate it. They are not going to like it. And that's how we know when we are committed to the will of the Lord anyway, that's how we know we're doing our job right. That's how we know we're doing what the Lord has said. I know, listen, happy Martin Luther King day, but I got to give you this word. Let me speed this up. Let me speed this up. So where the church is, is we are now in a place called a threshing floor. We're on a spiritual threshing floor right now. This year, 2024, is a threshing year. You're going to see a separation between wheat and tare. You need to understand in Joel chapter 2, the Bible tells us that if my people repent, then the threshing floors are going to be filled with grain meaning you're going to see a harvest come in. Uh, you're going to see two categories of people. You're going to see a separation, lines that are being drawn in the sand. It's happening right now. Uh, this is a message I begin to share over the past several years. We're literally living in it right now. You're going to see a separation between wheat and tare. In other words, those that are on God's side and those that are not. Getting ready to see it very clear. Those that have compromised and those that have uh, decided I'm going to yield and submit to God. You're going to see a threshing floor among churches. You're going to see a separation begin to happen within churches, specifically in Western nations. In America and in Europe, uh, European nations, you're getting ready to see it happen. What does this mean? This means that there are some churches that have Ichabod on the door. The Bible speaks about Ichabod, meaning the glory of the Lord has departed meaning there is no glory, there is no anointing, there might be skill of preaching, there might be skill in, in delivering a word or amassing a crowd, but we don't, we, we are not judged by God on how well we can amass a crowd. We are not judged by God on uh, what our numbers on the membership role looks like. What we are judged in is if we are obedient to him and his word, if we're committed to him, if we're truly worshiping him. And so you're going to see a separation begin to happen. It's happening already right now where the Lord says, I'm going to show you the difference between those that are mine and those that are not mine. I'm going to show you the difference between those that are prophesying with a spirit of divination. It's another spirit. It's a serpent spirit that's operating operating in their mouths and those that are operating out of my spirit, out of my pure spirit, because I'm going to tell you this, when it is a pure prophetic utterance and unction from God, this means that it's going to point you to Jesus Christ. When it is true prophecy, when the Lord is really speaking, it's going to point you to him and it's not going to point you to man. It's not going to bring glory to me or to uh, flesh or to an individual. It's going to be speaking and it's going to be in line with the Bible, with the word of God. If you want to judge prophecy, 
Understand that the Bible tells us all prophecy must be judged. I don't care who you are. I don't care how big you are, how, how people uh, uh, celebrate you. We have to judge the prophetic word that comes out of your mouth. Prophecy must be judged. And when prophecy is not judged, this causes chaos and brings division. Uh, when people begin to just say anything and there is no barometer, there is no measurement, we must measure any modern day prophecy by the scripture. Scripture. Does it align with scripture? Is it going in accordance to the word of God or is it operating against scripture? That's how we look at it. Amen. So I hope you get that uh, because we're going to see a separation. We're on the threshing floor right now. This does mean that a harvest is coming in 2024. Many of you are about to see things that you've been waiting on, things that you've been praying for, believing the Lord for. You're going to see a harvest of those things this year if you can pass the test of the threshing. You must pass the test. You have to pass the test. There's There are tests, there are trials that we all have to go through, that we all must deal with. And in order for us to get to the harvest, to see the reward, we're going to have to pass the test. There are many tests that will come. There will be tests uh, concerning your forgiveness. There are going to be tests concerning betrayal in your life. There are going to be tests for promotion in your life. There are going to be tests that are going to come to show. Are you going to choose God over money? Are you going to choose God over that door, that good door? Everybody's been saying this is the year of the open door. But do you know that Satan also realizes that? And he knows, so he will come to you with a good door that is not a God door. He will come to you with something that looks enticing to get you to choose something that will gratify your flesh temporarily, but it's not a God-given thing for your life. So pay attention to that because those tests are coming and you'll pass the test and then you're going to see the harvest on the other side. Now, let me move past this. We're in days of judgment. You've been hearing of the, the strange winds and weather. You saw the prophetic word. It's been happening for weeks. Uh, it started on the East Coast, as God said, up and down the Eastern seaboard, uh, where uh, people were tagging me and, and sending messages to our office of news reports concerning disruptive weather, uh, where uh, there were 60 mile an hour winds in some of these states in December and in January, which is so unheard of. There were tornadoes in several states over the past few weeks uh, in, in January and in December, which it, it, it's happened in, in some areas, a few areas before, but it was so many years ago, it's unheard of. What is the Lord saying? You heard the prophetic word. He said, when you see it happen, it's the sign that judgment has come to America. We are in an era of judgment. I don't care what, what you're hearing uh, from people that are just trying to uh, uh, speak to your flesh. We are in judgment right now. It's on America. It's already on the country. God's not waiting till an election to decide whether he's judging things that are wrong within the nation. He's judging, uh, and it's not just in our nation here, it's throughout the nations of the world. Get ready for this because you're going to see it continue to happen. Now, let me get to the point of what the Lord began to show me. Uh, there are several prophecies that I've given uh, years ago. Those of you that have followed the ministry for any length of time, you know that the Lord's had me share when nothing was going on. These words were not popular. I know that many are sharing things now. Uh, at the time, uh, there were probably a couple of us sharing uh, certain things and people were calling us crazy, saying it's not God. Uh, that's not going to happen. Now, the Lord gave me that prophetic word concerning viruses uh, that were going to be engineered in labs uh, back in 2015 and 2016. He said to prepare ourselves. And at the time, I saw the death angel uh, coming uh, across nations and I saw uh, many people pass. And uh, my church knows there are there. Many of them are watching. Uh, they were there in that service. As I begin to share that. And uh, after that, uh, of course, we know some years later, uh, we saw what came in the earth and uh, now reports are coming. It was engineered in a lab and it was and, and the word of the Lord was sure in that uh, news outlets begin to contact me saying, can you talk to us about this? Uh, prophecy you gave and uh, you had this years before. Some of them I have spoke to and some of them I didn't. I listened to the Holy Spirit. If he said, speak, I spoke to them. If the Lord said, don't, I did not. Uh, but uh, the Lord began to speak to me in more detail concerning those things that are coming. And I want to read this to you. This is a prophetic word that the Lord gave me uh, about three years ago. It was published two years ago, but I wrote it uh, down uh, about three years ago and then published it uh, in uh, the prophetic forecast book that many of you have uh, that came out uh, two years ago. 
So I want to read this to you on page uh, 41. Now, this uh, this word is documented and we're seeing it happen uh, beginning now. But I want you to understand that this is going to be happening throughout the decade. This is not a one year kind of word. We're in another era and the place that we're in, the church must get prepared. This is the reason why we can't afford to be distracted because we need to be equipping the church for a time of tribulation that is upon the earth right now. We are in tribulation right now. I know people don't believe it. I know some people think, no, that couldn't be happening. Well, then tell me why in many of these nations, some of these developing nations, I've gone to them in Africa. I've been to them in the Middle East where Christians are being beheaded because they named the name of Christ. We can't go to them and preach a gospel. I preached in those nations. We can't go to those nations and say, I know your family's being beheaded because they named the name of Christ, but tribulation is coming. No, they're seeing tribulation now. And America and many Western nations, European nations have been kept from some of the harsh tribulation against the church. But the era that we are in, uh, things are about to ramp up. And I, I just have to tell you the way the Lord gave it to me. I can't be politically correct in this. Things are about to ramp up. You're going to see it get worse uh, within this year and over the next several years. So the church, we have a responsibility to be ready and prepare. And if we are leaders, we have a responsibility to prepare the church and to equip believers. This is why we can't be giving you watered down messages. This is the reason why if you're listening to this, you need to be in a local church connected to a body of believers that are preaching the word of God for real and giving you the true word, not some kind of compromised, watered down, uh, 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 messed up kind of stuff that's only speaking to your flesh. Tell us for real. If it hurts us and it's the word of the Lord, then we need it. The truth sometimes is going to hurt you. But the Lord said this to me, and I wrote it here. Some of you have this book, and it says, uh, in the coming years, new pathogens and mutated viruses will emerge. Uh, the subtitle here is a prophecy of new and engineered pathogens. And it says, I see one in particular that will arise, and it will be worse than COVID. Now, I hope I'm not going to get flagged for saying this, but it is what it is. At that time, panic will ensue as people will say and fear that COVID is back with a vengeance. Some of these new viruses that emerge will be engineered in laboratories. Some will be weaponized. Hear me by the spirit. Some will be weaponized. Meaning when the Lord gave me this, I remember sitting at my uh, table writing this on my computer. And when I wrote this book, I, I want you to understand, I didn't just sit and just write. I It took me about a year to finish writing as the Lord had me compile prophecies and things that he gave me together. I would sit in worship for hours. Sometimes I wouldn't be planning to write. I would just be in worship and the Lord would say, go get uh, your, you know, your pad, go get your laptop, begin to write this down. And I would begin to write as the spirit of the Lord would lead me. I might've come out of uh, two hours of worship and I would just begin to write the visions that I saw uh, according to the word of the Lord. Now, when the Lord gave me this, I saw a different kind of war. I actually put a chapter in here called a new kind of war that's coming. And he showed me that this kind of war would be fought very differently, that there would be other countries and nations that will begin to try to weaponize uh, certain diseases that will be released against uh, uh, nations, against uh, uh, different uh, people in parts of the world. And so some of the things that we are dealing with, uh, and again, I have not shared uh, on this in, in a little bit of time. I think the last time I was on here sharing about this was August, uh, somewhere around August 9th of last year. That video is still up. But uh, I saw these things being weaponized. I saw uh, uh, nations coming together and elite groups of people uh, that were would begin to release certain things within the earth intentionally uh, in order to bring about a demonic and a wicked agenda. And uh, again, I'm sharing this plainly because this is the word of the Lord that was given to me. And uh, it's been published uh, now for two years in stores all over the country. Uh, but he said this, some of these viruses will be weaponized. What, will what we will see come out of the East, what we will see come out of China, what we will see come and has already happened, but what we will see come again out of these nations again, uh, it will be a demonic agenda to try to weaponize and to release sickness in the earth. You're seeing it now where there's mystery illnesses going on right now. Everything is not the flu. Everything is not 
COVID, everything is not uh, RSV, everything is not that. There are things that are released in the earth right now uh, that uh, governments are very aware of, but you are not being told. We are not being told. And I'm not sharing this because anybody's told me this in the government. I'm sharing this because the Lord told me this. And these are prophetic words that I've written down. Uh, and so some of you have been dealing with mystery illnesses and you're saying, what is this? And you're getting tested. And I released this word uh, again last year in August. I had so many uh, uh, doctors and nurses, when I posted about this just weeks ago, so many doctors and nurses have reached out to my office saying uh, there are illnesses going on and we don't know what it is. It is not the flu. It is not C-19. It is not uh, uh, RSV. It's not any of those things, but, but our hospitals are overrun. We don't know what to do. And I'm going to tell you this. And again, I pray that you hear this word and Lord cover this live because I know that the powers that be are not going to want this. But uh, it, much of this is being covered up. Your news media is not going to report this. Your news media is not reporting because there again, there are certain agendas that are being pushed because there are things that the enemy wants to happen in order to bring destruction to uh, certain people uh, and to cause uh, uh, destruction within the earth. I believe that it's connected to uh, a spirit of an Abaddon type spirit in the earth that brings destruction. Now, listen to the rest of this word. So it says some of these viruses will be weaponized and others will be used to usher into to usher the world into a new system and a new order in the earth. Vaccination centers will become the norm. The Lord showed me this vision uh, of these different centers that will be set up years uh, to come. I saw these centers set up. It was not just a clinic. It wasn't just like a, uh, you know, a hospital. These were literally centers and they were specifically for that. And again, this is the word from years ago that I wrote. It says the spirit of God uh, showed me that the day will come when yearly vaccinations for variants will become commonplace for the majority of the world's population. It's what they're going to be pushing. Although vaccinations have already been a part of the world for many decades, those vaccinations that are coming are gonna be very different. I saw a vision of scientists integrating vaccine formulations with technology, a technology that will reside in the human body, inside the human body. I'm gonna close that up right there. Uh, but there's more to this that you guys, many of you have it, you can read it. Uh, but this was the uh, agenda that the Lord began to show me that's being pushed within the earth. But the Lord said to me that what would arise and what would be engineered was going to be worse than COVID-19. Now we're hearing reports come out slowly uh, about uh, potential things that are coming and how they're planning for. And there will be uh, in the future another uh, major and massive outbreak and, and pandemic that's going to be far worse than what we've seen. But here's how the church needs to prepare. This is what we need to do. Number one, we do not operate in fear. I'm not sharing this with you to cause you to panic. I'm not sharing this with you uh, to cause you to be in fear and in doubt or to shake. I'm not sharing this with you to push Satan's agenda. That is not what's going on. The Bible says that we should not be ignorant of Satan's devices. So we must uncover and we must begin to reveal and shed light on the wicked plans of the enemy and then begin to release God's agenda and what God desires within the earth. So when we came into the month of December, the Lord said to me, you're going to do something very different. He said, I want you to do your New Year's Eve service as an anointing service. He said, you're going to get oil and you're going to pray over oil. You're going to anoint the people. He said, then you're going to encourage the people to anoint themselves. And so we came into a time of consecration uh, in end of December, coming into January 2. We started a consecration. By the time we got to January 3rd, <clears throat> I believe it was the 3rd of January. When we got to the 3rd of January, the Lord said to me, tell the people, anoint their homes. How many of you were on here uh, on that live prayer that we did? We sent it through a private link and we began to pray. And the Lord said, move now and begin to get oil, anoint your homes, anoint your bodies because of what is to come. Some of you were on here uh, on that prayer live that we did. I see you saying, yes, you were on. I see others of you saying me, you went and got oil, you anointed yourself. And that is uh, something that we're going to have to do. The Lord says, consecrate yourself. Number one, you don't move in fear. Number two, you must consecrate yourself. That means you come into a place of repentance. Oil within itself does nothing if the posture of the heart is not right. 
Just because you go and get oil and put it on something doesn't mean that you've anointed that thing. You must enter in with consecration. This means that you must uh, obey the spirit of the Lord. You humble your heart. You repent and you, you get in right standing with the Lord. He then consecrates you. He then begins to anoint you afresh. The oil is just a symbol of what he's done in the realm of the spirit. The oil is a symbol for what's happening in the realm of the spirit. So there are many people that think they can just live and do whatever they want to do and go and get some oil and splash it on their stuff. That does That is not uh, biblical. It does not work that way. It does not work that way. And so we have to come into repentance and into right alignment with the Lord. Then we consecrate. We anoint ourselves. So you're going, we're going to have to do that continually in the next several years. I'm telling you this uh, because of what is coming. And then he says you're going to have to apply the blood of Jesus to your doorpost. You're going to have to apply the blood to your house. We have to apply the blood uh, to uh, everything that we own and everything that we have. Uh, then he said to me, the next thing that you're going to do, he says, you must begin to take Holy Communion regularly within your own private worship. And I'm saying this for those of you that are on and many of you, this is going to be confirmation to you. It registers with your spirit. Uh, he says you need to begin to take communion privately in your own personal time with the Lord because it represents the covenant that Christ has with the church. It, it is a remembrance of the sacrifice of his body that was slain, his body that took stripes for us. It's the sacrifice of when he hung on that cross for the remission of our sins. His blood was shed so that we could be cleansed of sin. He took on our transgression. And so when we begin to eat of that bread, that's his body. When we begin to drink uh, of that, that juice, it's a representation of his blood. And so he says to tell the people that we must begin to take communion regularly as the Lord leads you in your home. Don't just wait for your church to take communion. Go in and get your own communion utensils. Go and get your own uh, uh, communion supplies and begin to take that as the Lord leads you in your own house uh, because it's going to be necessary for what's coming. There's going to be a blood barrier over you. There's going to be a blood barrier of over your immune system. And the Lord says to me that there's going to come a time where miracles are going to begin to erupt within the church like we've not seen in modern times. We've been seeing miracles. I've seen the Lord open blind eyes and he gets all the glory for it. I've seen deaf ears open, but they're creative miracles that we're about to see like we have never seen before. And God said to me, we're coming into the season of supernatural immunity, supernatural natural immunity, where some are going to say, doctors are going to say, we don't understand how you survived. We don't know how you made it out. We don't understand why this did not affect you. And it's going to be the Lord putting a supernatural shield over your immune system. And I'm telling you this because there are many that are going to have these testimonies where the Lord literally put a covering over you and others experience this and maybe they didn't fare well with it, but you have supernatural immunity. You're going to see the spirit of the Lord covering you. And this is only going to come again through right alignment with the Lord, through consecration. And then some will have the testimony that they went through it and it was tough, but they survived it and the Lord brought them out on the other side of it. So understand what's coming. Uh, again, it is, it is many things that are being engineered and many of these things are already in the earth right now. And so you're not crazy. When you see it, uh, when you can feel those things happening, you are not crazy. You are picking it up. Your spirit man is discerning it. And there's something coming again that's going to be far worse than what we have seen in the earth because we are in times of tribulation right now. It's already in the earth and the church is going to wax stronger and stronger. The church is going to become uh, more rooted and grounded in uh, the word of God. The church in America and in Europe and in the West, we're going to begin to see uh, the Lord begin to uh, refine and purify and to cause us to mature. There is a maturity that's going to come upon the remnant of God's church where we're going to now begin to move from one level of glory to the next level of glory. It's coming on us. We're going to see it happen in the midst of chaos, in the midst of all that's happening in the world. We're going to see the hand of the Lord moving. It's going to be the best of times for us while the worst of times are happening in the world. It will be the best of time for us while the worst of times happening in the world. This is a word that I gave my church about seven or eight years ago, uh, preparing them for what was coming. 
The Lord said we would live in two time zones. It's going to be the best of time for the church and the worst of times happening in the world. Understand that we are already here. And so if you think that things are just going to uh, uh, go to nothing happening and everything's just going to go back down to normal, there is no normal in, in this world. We, the kingdom of God, we are going to live in our own uh, uh, kingdom, in our own economy, under our own jurisdiction. We're going to be in the world. We are already in the world, but we are not of this world. Understand that we live by different guidelines. Understand that the hand of the Lord is over us. Understand that the Lord navigates and directs our path. We don't operate in fear. We operate in faith. Come on, somebody just post in the comments, supernatural immunity. That's what I keep seeing. The Lord's about to give many people immunity to many of the, the things that are going on. And some of you, the Lord's going to give you strategic wisdom on what foods to eat and what not to eat, what things to take and not to take. You're going to have to be careful of certain uh, medications that are coming. Because uh, the enemy has tried to infiltrate uh, certain pharmaceutical uh, companies, the word pharmakia uh, in scripture, in the Greek language, is the word witchcraft. And so it's very interesting that we have a whole industry that is called the pharmaceutical industry, uh, which is connected to that same Greek word pharmakia, which literally means witchcraft. And so you're going to have to be careful what you place in your body, what you allow, uh, what kind of medications you allow yourself to take. And you must be led of the spirit in what you consume and what you take. And so I'm telling you this, not giving you medical advice. I'm telling you this uh, as a prophetic word. You need to be careful what you put in your body. Pray over everything. Ask the Lord about everything. Go to God about everything and then begin to seek him about a specific diet for your destiny because there are foods that heal. And so we must begin to break away from mucus producing foods. We have to begin to move away from mucus producing foods and begin to gravitate to the will and the plan of God, even concerning what we eat. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue. That's dealing with what you consume, not just what you speak. This means that when you eat certain foods, it could bring life or it could either bring death. So understand that what, what we consume is going to be very important. Listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit. If he tells you don't eat this, don't eat it. If he tells you uh, don't consume that, don't consume that. You need to begin to go back to the purest form of foods as possible. Breaking away uh, from those uh, heavily processed foods and those things that uh, cause harm to the body. Let me move from this. I got to close this out. But I want to end it with this. The landscape in America is already changing. The Lord said this in that prophetic clip, that word that I just uh, shared with you. He said that in the coming days, we're not going to recognize our own country. Uh, this election year is going to be very pivotal. It's going to be very pivotal. Uh, in the months to come, uh, again, the Lord said to me, you're not going to recognize your own very country. It's not just for America. It's for other countries within the nation. You must begin to prepare now. Uh, because it's going to be unprecedented. What we're going to see happen within America and, and within the nations is going to be unprecedented. I saw a news article uh, in the vision of God. This has not happened yet. In the vision, I saw this article say, this has never happened before. It's unprecedented. So get ready for many shakings to come that are going to cause certain systems that we have known uh, that are going to be, uh, these systems are going to become unhinged things that our country has operated in for many, many years. You're going to see a deviation from those things uh, because it must be. Uh, biblical prophecy is going to be fulfilled and things that must happen must happen. Things that uh, are going to happen in the nation, again, they're going to shake uh, many people. But you, if you're rooted and grounded in Christ, if you are solid in the word of God, you're not going to be shaken. You will not be moved. You're not going to be moved when these things begin to occur. You're going to already know uh, about it because you you got the prophetic advantage. You have the prophetic advantage. Shout out to uh, Michelle McLean Walters, who wrote a book called The Prophetic Advantage. Uh, again, powerful book. Uh, hope I hope you all go and buy it and it just goes up the chart. Uh, powerful book. But it talks about when the Lord speaks to us concerning the future, uh, we are then able to have the advantage because we know what's coming. We're not shaken uh, when, when uh, engineered viruses are released in the earth. We know the Lord has given it to us. He's shown us what to do. 
He's shown us how to navigate it. He's shown us how to deal with it. And so uh, you're going to be prepared. But I'm, I am releasing this warning. I'm letting you know what's already going on in the earth and how you need to prepare. You must prepare for it now. You can prepare spiritually and naturally get yourself uh, together because many of the things that are uh, being released in the earth and that we're going to see in our lifetime, we will say we've never seen it like this before. It's going to look like something out of a movie what we have seen. And there are so many things that I wrote here uh, in this book. Many of you have it. If you don't have it, go get uh, Prophetic Forecast. It's a book that came out uh, two years ago. Many of these prophecies were from years before that. Uh, and, and we've already seen so much of it come to pass. And it's all biblically based. Uh, as the Lord gave me certain prophetic utterances, uh, it's all biblically based. Another thing that we're going to see in 2024 is a major shakeup in our economy a major shakeup in our economy. The Lord showed me uh, how our economy was being propped up and, and many of the things that were being released uh, was actually uh, lies. It, it wasn't true about the state and the condition of the economy being well and things are going well. The Lord says it was being propped up and the bottom is going to fall out. Uh, as we see a shift that's going to come in the economy uh, within this year, you're going to see money exchange hands. Uh, some that are wealthy, Overnight are going to lose their wealth. Some that have money and they've trusted in the stock market, they put their money in certain things literally overnight. You're going to see uh, some that are going to go down literally to nothing. And, and at the same time, in the kingdom of God, there are going to be kingdom millionaires that are birthed out like never before. Some that have, that have been faithful to the will and the word of God. Uh, you're going to see the Lord begin to cause money to come into your hands. Not so that you can go and just live lavishly. That's not it. Not so that you can go and just do whatever you want to do. But it's only for those that are submitted that understand I have an assignment to advance the kingdom. If the Lord can trust you with it, he's going to get it to you because he knows he can get it through you. Uh, there are things that we must build for the kingdom of God. We must begin to go back to a book of Acts model where the church had everything in common. We had everything in common. You, the book of Acts model, they had their own storehouses. You understand we're coming to a place now where there has to be believers that have their own stores, have their own businesses in every single industry. There must be believers that begin to pull together because in times of crisis within the earth, we don't need to look to a government to help us other than the government of God. This means that he's prepping us now the times that are coming where uh, when when there are food shortages that we're going to see, they're going to be believers that said, I got storehouses. Come to my storehouse. I've already got you covered. We've got uh, this that we've been planning for for years. I've already got you covered. That's the reason why the Lord told me uh, to begin to encourage people to buy farms and to buy land and to set up uh, those that have that assignment. Everybody doesn't have that assignment, but those that do, you're going to be a Joseph for your community. You're literally going to be a Joseph for uh, your church. You're going to be a Joseph for your city. You're going to be one that is a Joseph for uh, your family. And so we must begin to get God's wisdom and God's plan, because as we do, I'm telling you, uh, it's going to cause us to be sustained in the midst of crisis. We won't be shaken by shortage. We're not going to be shaken. That's why I, I bought a, a 200 acre farm and, a, and I'm buying more farmland right now because the battle is going to be over land. The battle is going to be over what you can grow. The battle is going to be over uh, those precious commodities and we must have our own. We have to be self-producing. We're going to have to have that book of Acts model where we got everything we need in the house. Everything we need is within the church. Everything we need is within God's remnant. If we need doctors, there are Christian doctors we can go to that are prophetic, but they also uh, are medical doctors and they can give us the word of the Lord and give us the right medicines at the same time. We need those uh, that are leaders, but you're Christian builders, you're architects, but you know how to build from heaven's blueprint. When others say it can't be built, you say, no, I got a plan. I remember I was preaching in Germany. And I went to Germany to preach and that pastor might be watching on here. And I went to this church uh, and uh, I was, of course, like the only black person there in the church ministering. But when I went in, the Lord uh, began to speak uh, and move so strongly in that church. Revival broke out in that ministry. This was like 2017. Uh, but when I went in, they said to me, we took this building. And we turned it into a church. It was not a church. It, it had living quarters in it. It had all kinds of things in it. 
But the pastor said to me, they said, originally the city told us we couldn't do it. And there was no way to get it done. But I have a believer who is an architect. And he went to sleep and God gave him a dream. And he dreamed how to design this in the way that it would get approved by the city and we could build it. He said, he, she, he, the, the pastor said, he came back to me and showed me the blueprint saying, I've got the design. God gave it to me in a dream. Some of you, the Lord's about to give it to you in a dream. You're about to see things in visions. There are some of you that are leaders in industries, but it's not just for your industry. It's for the church. That's why he's got you there. That's the reason why you couldn't leave that job. That's the reason why you couldn't leave that career. That's the reason why you're there saying, God, why do you still have me here? Because he's going to use you as a conduit for the kingdom of God. And so get ready for this to happen. It's already here. We're coming back to the book of Acts. Listen, I got to let you go, but I'm doing this gathering and I'm so excited about this gathering. It's going to be after the midpoint of the year. So much is going to transpire in 2024 that we're going to have to be ready. We're going to have to come together as a body of believers. And the Lord had me literally shift everything about this gathering uh, specifically for what's coming in 2024. And so typically I do a gathering in April. The Lord had me to move it uh, to July. We're going to need this as a midpoint for the year where we come together and seek the face of God. We cannot do it in a hotel because it's two hotels are too small. We could not do it in a convention center because the convention centers were too small. The Lord told me to take it to a stadium, and that's what we're doing. We're coming together to seek the face of God. I've not advertised not one speaker. There are speakers coming. There are prophets coming. There are leaders coming. I've not advertised anybody, and we are already so filled up in this event that's taking place July the 10th through the 13th. It's called Mantle. You know, the Bible speaks about a mantle. Mantles are passed down. It represents the supernatural power of God that comes on the life of a person. And so I need those of you that are planning to be there. I need you to go ahead and, and sign up for that event because it's filling up so quick. Now, there's some people that say, well, why do you have a ticketed event? When you do a stadium, you have to have it ticketed. Uh, that's the way, that is their rules. That's how it's operated. They don't allow us to just open the doors and let anybody in because it could be a fire hazard. So it has to go through a ticketing process. We've made that registration so low for you because we're not trying to get money off of a ticket. Yes, what you contribute is going towards paying for that. Uh, but we made the ticket so low for, and, and they're only available for a limited time because things have already been filling up so quick. I don't want you to miss Mantle 2024. July 10th through the 13th at the State Farm Arena in Atlanta, Georgia. Make plans now. By the time we get to July, there's already going to be so many things that have transpired in 2024 that we're coming to seek the face of the Lord and to get ready for what's coming, to experience the glory of God. Last year's mantle, there were people, there was a lady that came in blind and the Lord healed her, opened her eyesight right there in the worship. Nobody laid hands on her. Nobody touched her. She was screaming on the floor. I can see, I can see. People that were deaf, the Lord opened their ears and they could hear. There were people that came in in wheelchairs and the Lord healed them. They left walking. And so again, I'm praying for a move of God because we need a move of God. This is a time to seek the Lord. It's not personality driven. We're not uh, uh, driving a personality. It's not about uh, hear this singer. Yes, we'll have singers, but that's not even what it's not about a personality. It's only about the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you feel that you need to be there, I know we're we're already six months out, but make plans now. Go ahead. Go to joshuagiles.com and register for Mantle. Click the button that says Mantle 24 and register now. You can go to joshuagiles.com or mantle.org. I want those of you that are hungry there. We don't want just anybody there. We want people that are hungry for God. We want people that are hungry for the word of God because we're coming for a move. And I know it's going to be groundbreaking. Our theme for Mantle 2024 is turning the world upside down. We've already seen everything turned around in our nation and we're going to continue to see it. So this means the kingdom of God is about to rise to turn it upside down, which is turning it right side up. We're going to affect change within our, our communities and within our cities. I can't wait for this. I'm praying over it now. We're fasting uh, and believing God for a major move. So join with me. Go to joshuagiles.com. Register. There's group registration. If you want to bring your whole church group, bring them. 
If you just want to bring a group of friends, bring that whole group of friends and get them there. It's very the I, I believe the tickets are like forty dollars or something so low uh, uh, to get that ticket that gives you access to everything. There are other options there, uh, but we wanted to make it as low as possible to give you access to everything to get in that stadium so that you can uh, we can seek God and we can come together as a body of believers. So I can't wait uh, to see you there. I pray the blessing of the Lord over you. I pray that in the midst of the shaking, you will not be moved. You're going to be fortified. Your faith is going to be fortified. Your feet are going to be planted on the word of God. You will not be moved by viruses and diseases and engineered uh, uh, things that have been engineered in labs. You're not going to be moved by that. Father, we believe you for supernatural immunity, that you give us the wisdom to know how to eat the right things, to get our systems up. And Father, I pray that you expose every demonic plot. And even as we're in an era of judgment, bring correction and repentance, bring us back to you. And we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, thank you, everybody, for being on. I'm going to be back here, if the Lord says the same, next Monday. Same time, same place. I want to continue to speak the word of the Lord for this year because there's so much spiritual activity happening. And uh, thank you for being on. We've had over 13,000 of you watching live at one time. Uh, and I pray that the word of the Lord goes out. If you were blessed by this word, if it registered with your spirit, share it. Hit share on all social media platforms. Share it with them and hit subscribe if you're on YouTube so that you can get the alerts when I go live the next time. God bless you and uh, happy Martin Luther King uh, Day. God bless you.